I've been crying not much, but I definitely have been in my feelings and I may cry again on this video. Okay. So this video, before I even get into it, this video is going to be dedicated to Emac 1286 on YouTube here. I don't know what their other social media handles are, but find them on here and definitely give them love because they have unlocked another level of my healing. Now, as you can tell, the video name is Limerence. And when I tell you this has provided so much clarity now, it's been about two weeks ago since I made a video and this person said you, I think you described in limerence, limerence, which is a, uh, a, 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 an attribute or an effect of CPTSD, which I think childhood post-traumatic stress disorder. And when I looked up limerence, mind blown. Okay. I did not know it was a word for it, but I know you wonder what the fuck is it all that we're going to get into it. I just need y'all to stay tuned with this. Okay. Um, and this is forcing me to, of course, revisit everything that happened with my ex, the Zambian, who I was absolutely in love with in Cape Town, South Africa. The one who comes up in all of these, the one I said was my first tr and only true love. The one I was like, had this obsession with the one that's the reason why I left Cape Town in 2022. Uh, the one that um, I had these euphoric feelings about who I at one point didn't feel like I could live without. Um, I described it as a soul tie. Uh, I, and now when I looked up, honestly, when I looked up the soul ties, I fit that too. You know what I'm saying? Everything that it said, I fit that too. You know, it was this deep, that felt like a deep spiritual bond between me and him. Something that I just have often felt incapable of actually getting over all of that. So that's why another reason I'm so happy I decided to be more transparent because had I not been transparent about what's going on in my life, then Mr. Emac, or I don't, I don't know if it's a man or woman, sorry, Emac 1286 would not have been able to let me know what limerence is. Okay. So I'm going to be sharing my screen and we're going to go over the, I'm not going to talk about this article in which I, in my research, looked it up. Now I, two weeks ago, I knew I was going to have to deeply process this, right? I was going to have to really, and I'm going to put the link to this article in there. So just case you, if you're going through this, you can definitely go and help yourself, but I'm going to break this down. I have, I don't even care how long this video is because this is so big to my heel. And again, Emac 1286, you really just really got me all the way together with this. So I'm going to share my screen real quick so that we can actually, uh, so we can get into it. So limerence. Oh my God. And I realized I had just been doing this with him. I've been doing this with my daddy, a couple of other men, but the biggest, most traumatic, I think would have to be dad. Right. But second or equal to, or sometimes it feels like more intense. Honestly, in some ways I feel like my ex hurt me more than my dad did, but I don't even know if that's really true. Uh, you know, and I just realized I'm someone who's prone to this. So I know y'all wondering what the fuck are you talking about, bitch? Well, I'm about to go ahead and get into it. So let me show you. All right. So limerence. All right. So signs you experience limerence and not love. So, um, let me go to, so what is limerence? Uh, limerence is a mental state of profound romantic infatuation, deep obsession, fantastic longing. Um, you know, some people say it's the feelings you get when you first meet someone, uh, it can feel like falling in love, but it's a distinction. We're going to dig into the distinctions. So let's just start with what they said. You begin your day thinking about and end your day thinking about them nonstop, the freckles on their cheek, the way they wrinkle their eye, all that shit. And you didn't think you'd be able to find a, a, a love like that. Um, it's all of that shit. Um, and the dating, uh, this style of dating is devastatingly romantic, but when, but only when it's sugarcoated, it's often, um, it's often not, uh, the actual representation of love. If you've recently met someone in mirrors, this experience is, you know, it, it can seem like a dream come true, but it's really limerence. And so, um, I'm just gonna, like, I'm going to get into the article, but I'm also going to go over the notes because I literally like wrote this down and like processed it. Well, started to process it. So, um, it's just so much to cover, but anyway, 
So some signs of limericks is it feels like a craving, like it can go from complete euphoria to complete despair, you know, uh, actually I'm going to share again because I want to be sure that I'm giving y'all with y'all with the things that's really going to make sense. <clears throat> oh shit. So, um, hold on. <sighs> limericks. At first glance, limerence doesn't sound that different from falling in love. In fact, it doesn't sound negative at all, you know, to the wooed person. It's important to distinguish the difference between seeing a person clearly so you can develop a relationship with them or unintentionally producing, uh, unintentionally reducing their complex personhood down to a manic pixie complex shaped primarily by your hopes and dreams of what they can offer you. It can feel incredibly exciting to be swept away completely, but if it's state of high drama, it's akin to... Uh, even at its high state, best state of high drama, limerence is akin to empty pal- calories compared to the nour- nourishing love that uh, love can offer. Uh, the therapy, and I'm going, that's just hits home so much for me with pretty much all of my attachments to men. Oh God. Anyway. Um, and even my dad, again, we're going to, I'm going to bring this all back home y'all, but I want to get y'all to see what's going on. Um, Okay, you people who do limerence, you know, passionately in love, but limerence and love are not the same. If anything, limerence can be considered a fool's gold of love, shiny, but no real substance. That is absolutely, that represents me so much um, in yeah, I'm, I'm going to end up crying in this video. All right. Um, love versus limerence. Okay, so we can start off, it's a dopamine rush. Uh, while it's short, while it's short lived, it can be, you know, uh, while it's short, while it's short lived and conditional real love is fluid and unconditional. Uh, I want to write that down because actually it felt unconditional to me, which made it more dangerous, was dangerous for someone like me. Um, when you really love someone, you want to see them happy, blah, 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 blah. Love is steady and grounding, whereas limerence leaves us feeling being in the clouds, 100%. Love's a deep connection that people develop after knowing one another, blah, 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 blah. With limerence, you find yourself hyper-focused. Oh, so this is very key for me. Key, key, key. Oh my God, what did I do? Sorry, fuck, no. Um, limerence often comes with the tendency to ignore flaws and red flags. With limerence, you may find yourself hyper-focused on the subject and their positive characteristics to the point of ignoring flaws and directing your intense irrational emotions toward the idea that they represent instead of what the person actually is. Um, If you're still unsure if you're in this dynamic, uh, basically love stabilizes where limerence is intensity and then rapid destabilization. I could not have described that the three years of my life since I've known him any better. Same thing with my dad. And it, it's just, the projection can't pull through enough to create a relationship since it's not Okay. Love is rooted in connection where slimmer is rooted in obsession, possession. I didn't really have the possession jealousy shit, but it was definitely obsession and delusions. Um, all right. So I'm going to write down, uh, I'm, I'm going to like stop sharing real quick. So I could just write down some of my notes in my journal. So I wrote down, you know, and I, I think somewhere in there, uh, it goes in from create from euphoric to despair. And, that, and we're going to get more into that within the video, but that is, that if if you've listened to these videos, one of the things I've always said to describe my relationship with him was euphoria. It was something that felt before it felt spiritual. It had to be some outworldly explanation for how that felt. They had never, nothing ever felt like that. Even with my dad being younger, it wasn't like it was with him. It was just something that was just this euphoric feeling that I just was not able to be without. It was very difficult. Uh, and then so um, so the notes that I wrote down based on what I just read was, you know, I've done this with my dad. It was someone actually that's the book that's coming out who I, what this male stripper I did this with, with this guy, um, uh, maybe some other with uh, the dude. I had this also with the dude, 
who ended up having sex, even having sex, fall in love with my best friend at the orgy. That's something that you had to really follow me for a while. I know that story. I'll get into that if it's relevant, but me and her are friends now, but I did that too. Like just completely ignoring red flags and creating this, filling in the blanks with this fantasy. Now we can say that anybody does this, but I think I am particularly prone or have done this to the, you know, to one of the higher levels. Now in this, it gets into how, it could lead to stalking and shit. Okay. I never did all that. I never got that far. Like I was never going to be stalking about him. No one doing all that. But as far as, so I, that's why I'm not the highest level, like coming down about two, three notches would be me. Okay. Um, it's confused with love It's fool's gold. Yep. That was definitely me. Uh, it's grounding, ignoring flags, hyper focus to the point of ignoring red flags. Now we're going to really get into that in this video, the ignoring of the red flags. Okay. Uh, I ignored red flags from the very first interact from the very first interaction. The, the first red flag that I ignored was I got the feeling that I shouldn't take this person seriously. Now that is a red flag because I shouldn't be feeling like that. Like I, you know, but I was just like, whatever, but actually if we rewind back to where my mental state was, whenever I manifested this, I remember I was in Cape town and lone, my loneliness was starting to hurt me. It was starting to hurt. Loneliness can feel a, like a, a discomforting way, but I was starting, it was starting to be painful. I, rem I feel like I remember that moment in which the portal opened for me to manifest this relationship, this relationship. I remember I was just, and Roberta was with me, my, my girl, Roberta, she was, she, I was struggling with it. But then I remember saying, remember thinking, I remember I was leaning against the wall in that apartment in Greenpoint, in the Cape Royale in Greenpoint, South Africa in 2021. I remember leaning against that motherfucking wall and saying, any relationship is better than this. And I feel like in that moment, the universe said, okay, and got me the most destructive, fucked up shit that I could ever be in. And that's one of the many lessons that I've learned. If you out there and you are like me and thinking if, like I was and thought that it is not true. Any relationship is not better than being single. And it's so funny because I thought I was this headstrong girl who had it all together. I didn't. Um, because had I had it all together, I wouldn't have even had that thought. But I had that thought at four, and, I, and I'm in the moment. I meant that. Like, because the loneliness, the not having anything was so hard, was so all consuming that that's what happened. And I feel like that's part of the thing. Um, and so <sighs> I don't know what they were saying about ignoring red flags. It was so many of them. It was so many of them. He, and I, when I first started feeling connection to him, we were on FaceTime and he led me to believe that he was single and didn't have kids. Then after we have sex and I like him, he tells me that he's in a relationship and has a daughter. Instead of thinking, oh, wait, this person has withheld because, because, you know, he, and he'll act like he don't remember what happened, but I was there and I remember distinctly. I said, do you want a relationship? And he said something to the effect of, yeah, I would like a relationship. That's not the answer. Now, why would I think that you have a relationship if you answer like that? And he knew that he was just that was a form of manipulation that I just simply decided to overlook. And I overlooked it for many reasons. I overlooked it because in my mind, it's like, okay, when he first saw, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to take this dude serious. I'm like, he work in a club. He don't have enough money for me, you know, but I'll entertain it. You know what I'm saying? I'll entertain it because I ain't got shit else going on. Like I have no other niggas. So I'll just entertain it. Plus that energy would help me to manifest other dudes. All of that was true. But what I quickly was learning is see that on, that doesn't really, I, somebody like me has to pick and choose when they do that with men because it can turn into some problems as we saw. See, I thought I was just this poly bitch that could just work with it. And I thought I could just do this whole thing. And, and uh, I thought that I would, I was like, I'm not going to develop feelings for this person. This is going to be a fine dude that I have sex with that I see every now and then, because it's not going to be a situation where it's going to be anything serious. Like I never thought we would ever get there. I was not on him like that. So in the beginning, I can say I was clear 
in the beginning, I was clear. I knew this is not going to be nothing serious. I'm going to put him in the, over here and I'm still going to be looking for my main man. But I'll have him around because shit, I'm, I want some attention and affection and I want love and all that. And I, so I'm just going to have him over here, which is great. Nothing's wrong with that mindset. But see, what I quickly found out is I could not, I wasn't capable of keeping the boundaries clear. After he came on so strong, with what he wanted from me, you know, I was, cause I was thinking about this after I wrote this down, I'm like, but wait in the beginning, I, I didn't start off like this. I was very like, whatever. But so whenever he told me that I was like, mm, I still in my head, I'm like, nah, I'll keep him around. It don't matter. You not going to be my man. No way. So if you want to lie, that's fine. I'll just know you a liar and not care. Like I did not expect him to be around that long. I'm thinking, okay, he going to be, it is not going to be anybody who I'm going to be just with. Like it's going to be, Whatever, I'm not thinking about you like that anyway. I'm I'm still dating. I'm still going out and meeting other niggas. I was never like on no monogamy shit with him or nothing like that. Not in any way, form, or fashion in the beginning. So in the beginning, I was very, I was clear. I saw, hmm, okay. But then I was like, whatever. Like, I didn't care. All right? So let's just move on to the next part. So the next part, you know, it says a lack of, of clarity of who they are. So then it starts getting into the signs of limerence, getting more into it. And this video may have to be broken down into a couple of different parts. Cause honestly, it just may end up being too long. Um, so let's see. All right. So signs, it can be uh, hard to suss out the, the signs, but knowing the differences. So I'm going to, I have to get into the differences because in order for me, that's why I have to really thank M Mac E Mac, uh, because I, this is really going to help me move forward. What's interesting is I've had no problem dealing with this and dating like that did teach me some stuff, but like, I still need to be aware of my proclivity and like, I have to heal this shit you know, anyway, so, but knowing the difference, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So a lack of clarity of who they are. Okay. So the notes that I wrote down was, this was handpicking certain traits and experiencing, then shaping them into a bigger story about who they are instead of letting time fill in the gaps. You know, um, I want to take the, uh, let's see what it say. Because your view of them is limited, you can't fully appreciate who they are through the good and bad, and you interact with in, to interact with authentically. There's a lack of vulnerability. Blah blah blah. If you weren't able to, okay. If you aren't able to make the choice, the choice to choose each other after, okay, that's not okay. If you are experiencing limerence, the version you may have built about the person is glorified and exaggerated in a fantasy to represent your fulfillment of unmet needs. Woo. Okay. So, um, this is, <sighs> remember how I started out this whole thing, incredibly lonely, not feeling like I was getting attention. not feeling like anybody wanted me not feel, not, not feeling like I was connected to anyone. Um, not getting sex on a regular uh, basis, you know, not like, needing to feel wanted like wanting a man to actually want all of me you know um needing to feel all of those things right so um let's see so i wrote down um you know like i, I, I would see the flaws like i would also see he would, he would ghost me. Like he would just disappear for like a week sometimes. Like he would make all of these intense, uh, say all of these beautiful things and then just disappear and, and, you know, and then come back around and he would do all that. That's a fucking huge red flag. Now, I don't know if like that, that's a huge red flag. If somebody is like building this connection, you saying all this shit and then just vanishing and popping in, popping out. That is how that's something that they do. You know, they're not strong communicators. You know, they don't know how to handle a business like that, you know? And so, and that absolutely was a reoccurring theme. If I could just talk to me back then, I would say like, Sydney, girl, you think a week is bad. You have no idea what's coming as far as the instability, as far as the just randomly leaving and coming back with some reasons and shit. This is who he is. This is what he's going to do to you. 
leaving you, ghosting you, but just, just doing this, it's gonna be a theme. And that is a huge trigger for you, but you are not really seeing it because you're still in this weird phase of thinking, whatever that hurt me deeply. I remember the first time he did, it hurt me a lot, hurt me more than I was used to. I'm like, why are my feelings hurt? Like, I don't even like this nigga, but it's like, somebody lying to somebody because bitch you are hurt like you're hurting like you that you were affected you were thrown off by that like because the he was saying a lot of shit like he he really did pursue me emotionally that was the shift okay I had had bonds with men, but normally with men, when they get emotional, they want to act like they want to back up, but he, but he wanted my emotion. He, he would say things like, you know, I don't want to just be somebody you fucking like, you know, he would say all of these things. And then the way I felt around him was so mm, euphoric and good. I latched on to that shit. And before I knew it, and I had never been in love or experienced it what I thought was love feelings really to that level before. So when those things started happening, this whole, well, I'm not going to give him that much energy out the window completely. I couldn't sustain that. But what I did do and what I wrote down is, so instead of like me saying, okay, like this is, um, this is, uh, who he is and Sid, you know, you you do need to get away from this situation because he has a girlfriend. See, back then I didn't care about him having a girlfriend because I'm like, whatever, bitch. You know your your bitch your bitch your responsibility. I'm not gonna be taking you seriously anyway. I'm like, I, he'll be around about a week and then I'll be on to the next. That's literally. I, now I can say I meant that, but yeah. So and things I did instead of seeing him clearly is I would um make excuses you know i would get into self-blame or in some kind of way i would um you know that would enable me to only see the good shit you know to fill my void you know i don't really have time to see that you are emotionally insensitive when i'm lonely and i need a nigga around you know what i'm saying like i don't really have time to decide that that's who you are i need to make excuses for you because so that i can make excuses for myself to not actually give myself what I really want, which is stability. So I'll take whatever I can get right now because I mean, I ain't got shit going on anyway, you know? Um, and so I would hide behind being understanding. That's another big thing. I would hide behind being understanding. You know, I understand. I understand. I, I would do that to a fault. You know, being understanding is a trait that I love about myself. I am understanding, but it's levels. Okay. Um, and being understanding and being forgiven does not mean welcome you back. See, I, it takes a lot of me to cut people off. If I cut you off, you ask for it, really ask for it. Like if I care. So I'm just scared to let it go of the delusion. You know, I needed it, you know, I did it, but you know, that's what I'm saying. And that's what I wrote in here. I didn't really have a lack of, of clarity. I just couldn't hold on to those. Like I couldn't act or shift my behavior to reflect the red flags I was seeing. I saw red flags, but it wasn't enough for me to stop dealing with him or stop talking to him. I, 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 I couldn't afford to do that because that meant going back to being completely alone with no attention, no love, no energy, because he was giving me, he made me feel like somebody really wanted me for real. And I um, wasn't ready to let that shit go. You know what I'm saying? So I kept thinking, I think and I was still kind of separating. For, I, I lasted as long as I could with the actual keeping this whole thing into perspective. But I couldn't hold on to that. All I could hold on to was how good it felt. You know, I, w I, would, I couldn't be without it, you know. Um, and so um, when it says represent, the rep represent, what does it say? uh made a made up fantasy to represent what i needed so we're going to get into what he represented um in a second but i it was a point in time in my healing where i did acknowledge but couldn't hold on to the fact that a lot of this had to do with what he represented not what he actually was because if i look at what he actually was it was nothing really going on you know me please understand that i never went out on the date with this person that um he never gave me any money that he owes me money that he, um, you know, it was the simplest things that he 
he was never able to maintain any change when it comes down to things that I expressed that I needed. I was, y'all, I, w- I was getting words, a euphoric feeling and a fantasy. That's what I really got. You know, it wasn't really any, he didn't do anything to help me with my life. Like he did, he, he wasn't really showing up at one point he was showing up, but it was a very short lived time in the thing. That was like maybe 0.2%, like like maybe 2% of the time that I actually got something in real life, but I couldn't see that. I could not see that. I could not, I couldn't, I didn't even notice that I wasn't getting anything that I wanted. He would tell me we were going to go out on dates, but they never did. He would say, yeah, we're going to go out and do this thing tomorrow. And it just come over and over again, break his word. And this is in the very, this is in the infancy stages. This is like a month in. He had already broken his word a million times. Like, and that is a, what or something that I should say. The me now would say, okay, this is who this person is. So you need to just go on about your bed. See now, now when I'm dating and do show anything like that, it's, it's not even difficult for me to not give it energy. I don't, I don't even do that anymore. But see back then I was still doing it. Um, and so, yeah, I said lying about being single and with a kid, disappearing, emotional insensitivity. You know, I was expressing it from the beginning. When you do that, it hurts me. It never changed. It's like he, he couldn't, he never could, no matter what it was, he never could be emotionally, consistently emotionally good to me. And, and I, and I, and I remember telling him like, this is like emotional abuse. Like you tell me all of this stuff and you, and and you act right for a little bit, but then you go back to doing the same thing. And then, and, but I'm also going back to doing the same thing, which is entertaining your excuses, your reason. I just felt like it, I just like before I knew it, I was just too hooked in. I couldn't, I just could not let that go. That's why I, it's really important for people to get to a place where they are happy with being single, because if you hate being single so much, you do anything to not be single, including entertain fucked up relationships. Like I did. Don't be like me. You, the strongest of us, people think I'm all strong and know it all. I mean, I thought I did, but I, man, I, I mm. anyway, uh, but you know, I use being poly as being an excuse. So it's like, okay. Cause, cause on one end you can have different things to different people. And I want to be this progressive person who's like, okay, I'm going to enjoy him when he's around. You know, I don't need to make him, I don't need to, um, I don't need to, uh, have him around every day. Like I would do all of this under the premise, under the thing of like, getting other men, but see, the problem is when you don't have other men who are doing that, then it's very easy to get all wrapped up in this one thing. So I was trying to be this progressive, you know, person. And I do love and value that mentality, but I just simply wasn't ready for it. Clearly, you know, everything is easy in in theory. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to say, you know, to say, okay, I'm not gonna get sucked in because it's not what I want. My whole thing was, I'm not going to get serious. I'm not going to catch feelings for him. I'm not. Cause I had had dudes before. I wasn't just pulling it out of my ass in my defense. I had had many things before, like dudes that was around and all that shit, but I never really got intelligent all into them. Cause I knew that, that they weren't really what I wanted. So I had practice with not being someone who got all emotionally wrapped up in anybody who wasn't what I wanted until him. That's why I thought it was love. And another thing you have to understand is I thought that, um, I'm used to being spiritually protected. I've always been spiritually protected when it comes down to men. I feel like men, when they're not good for me, they vanish from my life and I can't reach them again. They don't keep coming back until way later when the feeling is gone, but he kept coming back, which made me think it must be something there. Cause this never happens. And it's just like, it was too much. Okay. So I, and then I, then I was also, uh, I justified, okay. He can be inconsiderate. He ain't my man. He can have a girl and a kid. He ain't my man. Like, like I use all of that. And then, you know, I was also just being very naive. Okay. So, um, Cause though I said that I somewhere in me believed him every time he said he would change a behavior, even though he didn't change it, I believed it every time. So recognizing the illusion constructed constructed in my head. So the de- the problem with limerence is uh, you begin to not be able to see things, which is what this whole thing is about. And y'all, a common theme in my life and what in, in problems in my life is a inability to see things the way they are. What do you think body dysmorphia is? I can't see 
what's in the mirror. I can't see it. So I come up with whatever's in my head. And in this case, I came up with a big stomach and now my stomach is big as it's ever been. It's cool because it's going down. I'm, I'm working on that. But like I have imposter syndrome, not being able to see myself as I really am. Like it, and like it, when come down to like me dealing with these low energy, these useless men that I've dealt with in my life, it me not being able to see how brilliant and, and, and amazing I am. Like in, in me and literally having to wear glasses is the direct manifestation of not being able to see things clearly. And like, this is just, that's pretty much what limerence is an inability to see things as they are. Like I, I, I this is like a common theme throughout like, my life and i'm so glad thankful for emac because this is going to help me to be able to get better and i'm gonna and i did the same thing with my dad i couldn't see that he was wrong as fuck for not coming to my graduation he was in the same city didn't come to my graduation i didn't even allow myself to feel disappointment about that maybe i was just so used to being disappointed my what I expected from men has always been so low and I have been really struggling my whole life to get my shit together with that. But, um, it says, um, the virgin you may have built with them uh, uh, about the person is simply a glorified, exaggerated fantasy made to represent your unfulfilled and unmet need. Woo. Okay. So let's get into what he represented. He represented someone who missed me. When he told me he missed me, I believe him. I believed him. Like it would usually go in one ear and out the other when dude said, but I, I believed him when he said he missed me. Like he wanted to be with me. I remember him telling me like, I want to be with you. I feel like I had never heard that in my life. Like when is the last time somebody literally wanted to be with me and said it, you know, who wanted my vulnerability, who wanted my emotion and who was vulnerable and emotional with me. I was like, Oh my God, you know, this is great. You know, he, he fought to be with me, you know? So little did I know, <laughs> it's a lot about the story that y'all just simply don't know but i'll tell you a little bit now kind of got to can't really get into this without giving you more of what what was going on you know he was um in a relationship with some kind of fucking gangster bitch who uh, you know would threaten harm physical harm on on any woman he was dealing with and or him apparently he was his life was being threatened and i didn't know that until when did i find that out months later but at this time I, all i knew is that he had a girlfriend but him vanishing and disappearing and then he told me he he lost his phone when really and i had to talk to him through his best friend uh and the best friend was the one making all of our dates and you know telling me to meet him here and telling me he was on the way to the house and all that shit all of that stuff okay so um I didn't know that, you know, and he wasn't being forthright with me. He was withholding that too. So withholding shit, very vital information seems to be a theme in this. So he'll just disappear. And then little did I know until I found out, okay, so he, and then he was saying, that's why I was acting like that because I couldn't take you directly because I was scared she may find out. And then I, my life would be in danger. So was yours, all that shit. But once I found this out, instead of that being something to say, Sydney, get away, that made me I romanticized and made excuses for that more. I'm y'all like I'm telling y'all, y'all have no idea. And I'm not going to give y'all everything because I'm writing a book about this. I'm going to write a book about the all the crazy details. But so, you know, risking his life to be with me, you know, made time for me, claimed me. He told everybody at his job and all of his friends that we were together. You're talking to someone who's never felt seen, loved, felt like men really want to be with me for real. And 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 that hurt me a lot. That made me feel like I can never get love. So therefore having someone to claim me, that's what you represented for me. That's what you represented for me. You know, wanted everybody to know that we were together, you know, uh, that he wanted a future with me. You know, he wanted to be with me for life. You know, he wanted to have kids with me though. I don't want kids. The, I, the fact that he wanted kids with me definitely made me feel like someone wanted to have me and to keep me. I never felt like men wanted to keep me. I felt like the fact that men would ever end a relationship with me made me feel like, like these dudes just don't see how great I am because if you did, you would never end the relationship with me and never want to. And so he wouldn't do that. And so, you know, um, he felt connected to me. Cause the thing is, when we, when we would describe how we felt about each other, it was identical. He's the one that said it's a spiritual connection. I didn't even say that first. He said that, that let me know that he felt that too. So these are things, those are my unmet needs. I mean, shall I go on? I think I shall, you know? Uh, and he was serious about me. You know, he actually apologized to me, even a man apologizing to me, even if he didn't back it up, just him saying it was a big deal to me. Um, said the sweetest things and he accepted me and his acceptance of me was actually 
a, a, an illusion, actually, now that I am, well, God, it's all an illusion. Um, and I wrote down, you know, I told him I was poly and all that shit, but he didn't really accept that for real. I think his plan was to get me pregnant so that I wouldn't go anywhere, which is, you know, pretty much what he told me. And he, um, and he, I told him I didn't want no kids and all this shit. And he was, he was a little bit more, a lot more conservative than me. And I thought he accepted me, but actually he really didn't like, cause it's like, it would be times I would come up and I'd be like, And I'd be like, um, well, wait, we, we in an open relationship or whatever. But he, you can tell that he, like when he was getting ready to come to Columbia, I thought we was on some poly shit and he kind of made it clear. Like, no, nah, I'm not with that shit. But I'm like, but I thought you were just like he acted single and act like he didn't have a kid in order to kind of get me, you know, uh, he also played along with his poly shit. Like I feel like. Uh, making me think that it was accepted, you know, making me think that we could do it when he really had no, I don't think he ever really had intention of really being poly for real, but you know, he knew I was fucking other dudes. I mean, I told him, I said, look, you have other bitches. I'm you, you fucking somebody. I'm going to be fucking somebody. And he would say things like, well, yeah, I mean, that's fair. But then he'd be like, well, when it's me and you though, it's only going to be me and you. And I'm like, "Mm, no, 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 that's not what I want. You know what I'm saying? But, um, I was just so, at one point, I was just so in love with him. I did all, but I always maintained the fact that I was going to have other dudes, especially since he wasn't going to be eating no pussy. But, you know, it was a lot of things like, and then no kids. He kept literally trying to get me pregnant when I said I didn't want no kids. Um, And he would always be like, yeah, you say that now. So he didn't really accept the two big things about me that I never want children and that I'm not going to be in monogamous relationship. So anyway, so he played a game. I mean, uh, maybe he has some limerence of me too. Um, so yeah. Whew. All right. So let's go on to the next part of this. Cause this is just really deep. Um, it just really is. All right. Intrusive and voluntary thoughts. Okay. So intrusive, I'll consume and get away with your everyday life. You will fantasize uh, involuntarily, obsess over the shortest, most uh, insignificant interactions. Um, even if there's no actual relationship, um, let's see. Connections. <laughs> Limerence doesn't have the same depth. If you end it, it can feel like a one-note romantic comedy. So, one of the things that was like that I think that I described that made Emac say this is because the obsessive thoughts. Oh, absolutely. 100% absolute obsession. Like I don't even know how to describe. I don't know how to say it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like uncontrolled, even, even now, even now I, I, it's not obsessive. But the thoughts about him still just come and it is very difficult. I try to imagine my new man and then it quickly goes right into him. It is still a thing. But oh Lord. When I was in the thick of it, it was all, I could think about 98% of my airtime was given to him and us and the way he looked, the way he kissed me, the way he helped me, the sex, uh, his voice. I would watch his music videos over and over again, like a fucking fanatic. Like I was absolutely like obsessed because it just provided this level of dopamine that nothing else could give. Um, I often told him, I'm going to get more into the addiction part later because that is absolutely what he, it felt like. It is very difficult to explain if you have not experienced this, but I'm trying my best obsession. Shit. And if I think about it, we were never actually in a real relationship. It was real to me. But as far as what I'm, what I'm manifesting, what I'm going to get, what it's like to have a man really show up for me and me be with him every day and he's mine and no other bitches around. And I will say, ever since that, I have never, ever, 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 even remotely entertained anybody else with a fucking girlfriend. That was, or a wife, that was the last time. 
Now, I entertained this poly couple in Mexico, but that wasn't really, it, it never got deep. I was too damaged at the time. I was fresh out of Cape Town from the, from the heartbreak. Like, um, so no, I, I don't, I can't really, I cannot and will not get involved seriously or really any capacity with anybody that has anybody else. I don't care if you poly, open, closed, whatever. Hell no. I learned my motherfucking lesson on that shit. For many reasons. I ain't cut out to be number two or number three. I don't give a fuck if you're poly or not. If anybody in your life can say, I don't want you to be with her and you feel like you need to obey that, it's not for me. Even if you're poly, I don't give a flying fuck. I ain't got nothing to do with self-esteem and all the other shit y'all putting on. It's just the principle of that. That's just, I can't do it. And number two, I fucked around and got with a nigga that had a gangster with a, a family that could murder my ass. Oh, lesson learned. I'm good. Never again will I do that. So that so many lessons came from this, but it is one of them. Okay, so it was it, it was real, but but it's nothing compared to what's coming. Uh, but this is the key: the uncontrollable intrusive thoughts. Um, it was all consuming. Like I, it, I couldn't. I, it's it. It was just as if a person. Was just doing coke all day like a chain smoker like it, it it was just but whenever i talked to him he was feeling the exact same way about me exact same way about me but sometimes i was have trouble focusing like on work and shit like that i could do it but it would take some doing to get my ass to focus uh so then the next sign is talking about uh life uh you know shit falls you know you, you kind of start you know neglecting other parts of your life Yes and no. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I wrote, he was just a part of all of it. Like I would just find a way to incorporate him into everything in my head. You know what I'm saying? Was still doing the work, but focusing was harder. Um, I'd still work out. Like I would work out, but if he was coming over, I'm canceling that. Anything that I could cancel would get canceled or get pushed back if he was coming over. It was like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, shit. I canceled him on my trainer so many times. Fuck that workout. Fuck that shit. Like doing it once or twice, okay, but I was doing way too much. Um if he called, I came within I mean it was several times I was late going to see him because I was still finishing up work. So that's why I say yes and no. Okay, I wasn't gonna really let it get in the way of money, but still it was still a lot. Okay. Uh I always talked about him, you know. Uh, but the money will go down when I was hurting. When I was hurt. Cause I still haven't mastered how to power through work and shit when I'm in pain. I ain't got that together yet. Uh, so it said love enhances and limerence swallows up and only focus on them. Okay. So woo, not in this next part is a motherfucker. Okay. Let me show y'all real quick. All right. Um, life is deprioritized as you center. Okay. I said that already. You feel emotion dependent on the slightest reaction from them. All right. So emotional dependence on them. If you were experiencing strong, persistent yearning for them to to reciprocate, uh, oh, uh, your feelings, you know, and if when you get them, you're good. When you're not, it's anxious. Oh, absolutely. Any interaction, euphoric. Any time, if I felt I did something wrong and he was mad at me or any kind of rejection. Uh, it, 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 it'll be not cool, but it's talking about, uh, you know, when you're not with them, you feel anxious in the drug withdrawal. One million percent. Emac also said, I may have an, I have an anxious attachment style. Pretty sure that's true. But with him, like it would be this craving. I would even get jittery. I would start like mousing my leg, like when it's gone too long without seeing him. And even when I think about the excitement of being in my Uber on the way to his job, because at one point I was always going to his job and seeing him before his shift started. And 
We would just be kissing and shit and doing all that at the back in front of everybody. And it was great. I just, it was so crackhead. Like I had, I even, I cannot remember feeling like this even with my own father, which is interesting. Like it was just crazy, full blown, uncontrollable. Like uh, this inner pulling. Like I remember telling him, like it's this magnet inside of you, and it's a magnet inside of me. And when that bitch is turned on, I ha- it felt like must have him. Now it felt like that, but I enjoyed it though. Like it's like I liked that feeling, that connected to somebody. It's like I, I when I listen now, when I listen to them love songs and shit, I completely understand what them people are talking about. Like, because it's like, and I understand why you'd be ready to fight and act a fool with somebody take that away. I, for the first time I was able to get it. I didn't get it before. I'm like, mm mm-hmm. but it's like, I thought that, but see, just some, I've never been in love and a healthy love thing before. So, I mean, I just really thought this was what it was. It was so control. It was so, y'all, I don't know how to, I don't know what are the words I can use. It felt like I imagined how it would feel if somebody you craving a cigarette. I would imagine that's how I feel if you craving any motherfucking thing that you were addicted to. It was absolutely insane. It was absolutely. And then when you get it, it is it's just a, you him just that nigga could just tap his foot and I'm just, Oh, he tapped his foot. It was just, it, it's just a fix. It was just drug addict. And he, he was my fix. Like I, I had to have him. I had to be around him. Like, he would touch me and it was electricity. He would, it, it was just this, oh, and that's exactly what they describe in here. So this combined with exaggerated interpretations and meanings behind their actions is mood swing. So euphoria when it's good and deep anxiety and depression when I perceive rejection 100%. The high was it was high, but the lows were devastating. I, if I thought he was upset or I thought it was over, the anxiety and fear and and just just complete insanity. Like I just I just I couldn't function. Like, um, and I was like, this has to be love. What else is this? Like, what else can affect a person this way? Like, cause this is crazy. I, and this is when I wrote this, I had, I cried. I don't know if I'm going to cry this time, but I remember in Columbia, remember he was supposed to come to Columbia with me. Uh, he asked me for money and I said, no, because in the past he owed me money. It was a small amount, but I didn't care. I'm like, look, I don't like giving niggas money. Like I'm good. He needed money. He was, he was in his home country. He was in Zambia, needed some money for something. And I was like, look, I ain't gonna be able to do it. I think it's like a hundred or something. I'm like, look, I just really, I, I thought about it. I'm not gonna be able to do it. And then, and and I, and then after that, he stopped answering my phone calls as much. Like he saw it. I felt him like not really talking to me as much. And I remember y'all being in that apartment in Medellin and I had a full blown panic attack. Like I couldn't breathe. I like was shaking and like, I couldn't handle it. Like I was texting him because at this time, see at this time we could text directly because he was away from home. He was in Zambia. So me and him could text directly. And I remember he promised me he would be mad at me if I said no. But the minute I said no, he he slowed down significantly on talking to me and texting me. Was not answering my phone calls. And I was like texting like I can't I can't handle I can't take it if you don't talk to me like I I can't take it like like I I and I and I remember my friend. Oh, <sighs> I met my friend Armani coming over to, he just pulled up at me because I was not right and he knew it. And he came and I just was crying about it and I was just like, y'all, I couldn't breathe. Like, I couldn't sleep. Waking up in the middle of the night, like, I checking my phone, checking my phone. Like, I just couldn't handle it. Um, 
other times, you know, a couple times I popped up at his job when we was at Cape Town. One time I went because he just wasn't responding. Again, now this is before I knew about any kind of gang shit or whatever. This is when I still thought he just didn't have a phone. When he did have a phone, he just would give me the number because he didn't want the girlfriend to find out about me. And I didn't find any of this out until later on. You know what I'm saying? But I was remember just, just going to his job like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I just, I couldn't like handle it. So it was just a lot, y'all. That was, that was hard. And I thought it was because of my abandonment issues, but it was sure that's the part of it, but it was also so much deeper. Like, and that's why I say that this relationship was a lot of emotional abuse because I was so very clear with him on when you do, I know I need to work on it, but when you do this, I panic. I can't handle it. Like you, like, and this is during the 2022 time. So we had gone through this a lot in 2021. So I was just like, it was hard. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Anyway, another thing is seeking validation desperately, um, excessively aware of reciprocity. I can't say the word of reciprocity. Um, and hungry for their approval. You know, you pay attention to how much they affect you and why you're so knocked out balance and they don't respond in the way that you want. I was so easily knocked out balance. I mean, even if I thought for a second that he was upset, as I said, I would couldn't function. Like my body just lost its energy. These trauma responses in my body. Like I would be physically weak. Like I'd be physically weak. Don't want to do anything. Like, and then I hear from him and I'm happy again. It's like, and it's so crazy because I went through that when I was younger and I thought I had healed that, but not at all. Um, and I did, I, I needed him to give me back what I was giving him. I needed him to give me the same level of consideration. I used to say all the time, I always consider your feelings. You don't consider my feelings. Like he used to do so many inconsiderate things, like leaving my messages on red, not communicating, like doing a lot of shit that like I never did to him. And I want him to give me what I was giving him. So yes, reciprocity was I was all focused on that, focused on that. And it says love involves reciprocity, but limerous involves a craving for it. And that's all I did was crave it. Cause I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't really get it. I mean, I got it. I felt like his love for me or his feelings for me was strong. I, I can say, and I still feel like he loved, I, I feel like he loved me th the way that he could, but as far as action, showing up, doing shit. Oh, I never got that. <laughs> Like I remember I asked him to watch my Instagram. I mean, watch my WhatsApp story because that makes me feel like I've connected him on days. We can't talk because, because we were connecting through his friend and I could not talk to him directly. And we couldn't talk. We would go three weeks without talking sometimes, you know, when he was planning to come to there. And I just always felt like he could do more than he was doing. I just did. I just feel like, man, I know you could do more than what you're doing, but he just never did. And it was just always a longing and a craving and a begging and a, being let down it was that was what it was the whole time it was promises and no action he would maybe do like i would say watch my whatsapp story he maybe do it for two days and after that he wouldn't do it he would be online posting just would never watch my fucking story and just shit just see how small it is just wouldn't do that so yes so just because i felt uh okay then it said in that article just because you feel like that doesn't mean that they're special which is true he was it, i don't know but, uh, so, so anyway, so limerence is, you know, really seeing a person versus glossing, glossing over the bad shit with some sparkly shit without looking at it. And, um, so that's really going to be, you know, my work, you know what I'm saying is doing that. So how much more do we have? Not much. Okay. I'm going to, I'm not going to separate this. Either you watch, you watch, you don't, you don't, but I really hope y'all are getting value from this. Cause like, this is just me process. And this is just like, Stage one of fucking processing this shit. Like, I mean, cause I, I'll, cause I'm only going to make this video about him, but the next video I'm going to have to really dig into, uh, other, you know, my dad and how this has happened. See, this dude has really been a great teacher to help me to see myself. I wouldn't have seen all this without him cause I never experienced this, anything this intense. So stages of limerence. So number one is effectuation, you know, so, so, so strong chemicals that heighten how we feel about the person and overlooking the red flags. We've gotten over that. I did that. You know, I was too, too nervous. It says too nervous to evaluate whether they're good for you or whether they're a good fit. Instead, I'm more comfortable merging with and harmonizing wants and needs versus being 
discerning. So that's very key. Um, and then it says they feel too extraordinary to lose nothing. So nothing seems bad about him. Um, more connected with getting that more concerned with getting that high versus doing anything that could add to the distance. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like this is just reading my whole fucking, um, life. Oh, okay. So I did break it down. Then it said, Oh, so yeah. So as I said before, I could not risk letting that euphoric feeling go. So anything would do. And I have to confess, even to this day, if he was to reach out to me, it would be some relief in me. I'm not to the point yet where him reaching out to me wouldn't make me feel a bit of happiness. I'm, I'm as you can see here, I am a work in progress. Um, so I'm really hoping that me understanding this will help me to break that. Um, so he was never a good fit and I can give you all the reasons why I want a man with money, a childless man, a single man, a poly man, a man that's emotionally considerate, a man that's loving, a man that doesn't have an, a, a, a fat bitch who's trying to kill him or me, uh, a man that I can call directly, a man that um, has a passport, passport privileges that make sense for my lifestyle. Um, a man who actually, and Limerick even went over with the dick. The dick wasn't really that good, but in my mind, but I would still choose him over any other dude to fuck because he was a man that I loved, you know, that I felt connection for a dude that eats pussy, a freak. That's number 12. So he all talking about Christianity and all this bullshit. And I want a man that's into spirituality. Like, I mean, it's never going to like, what about what I just mentioned lines up with anything that I want, but I could not evaluate whether he was a good fit. I was too worried about what he represented and, and not letting that high go. I had to have the dopamine rush. I could not, it didn't matter about the reality. I mean, I could see these things, but see, I say that, but I see these things, but I never once promised monogamy to him. I was like, look, we, I'm, cause I knew that it was so many things that he didn't give me. I know I was going to have other niggas. I never did. I will say that I did have some of this, but I was also a real bitch at the same time with it. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't want to add to the distance. So I would really think carefully before I, I told him how I felt about something. Cause I don't want to cause no shit. Cause it's how you're so good, you know? Uh, but also that's also my trauma response from childhood too. Cause I, you know, got the idea that pushing a dude too hard will make him leave you. So sometimes I can, I just, so I would hide behind being overly understanding when really I was just scared to speak up because I think they're going to leave. You know what I'm saying? But I, got, I don't really do that. I don't really do that no more. You know what I'm saying? I, I, even with him, I was very honest and blunt about how I felt, but I would always feel the need to be overly forgiven and overly understanding at the same time. So the next part is crystallization, you know, rejection. Okay. So rejection is to be avoided at all costs. It's about maintaining the intensity and the packaging and packaging yourself positively to gain approval. Um, red flags are transformed into green ones as you rationalize away the negative behavior. Ooh. I spoke my mind, but I did want to be understanding and not to stress him out. It was so many times where I would let things slide or just could not talk about things. I always felt rushed every time we talked, every time we were together. Cause I knew it was always some crazy ass fat bitch just in lurking in the corner. So for me, I just really, it was so much stuff. I didn't get a chance to address. And that's really not my style. Now with the dude that I had in uh, Columbia, the, we, we were great. We would always nip. We were able to communicate the way I like to communicate nip things in the bud as they come up, but it was never time. And I just always felt like I don't want to stress him. So you have somebody who's dealing with an abusive thing, having all these money problems, blah, blah. I didn't want to add to that. So it was times where I would just like say, all right, we'll talk about that. I would just be like, I had to feel like I had to choose. I got a 10 minutes to talk to my man. Michael talk about some shit I'm processing and hurt me or Michael be all lovey dovey. Cause I need that. So if that wasn't so much of, it was some of this sure, but it was also like a time thing. I just never really felt like I was going to get enough time with him. And so 
it was a lot of things I never addressed or spoke of with him that hurt me deeply that I never was able to talk about with him. That he still doesn't even know. That's why I just never felt like he understood how deeply I was hurting all the time. I was always hurt. See, looking back, I was always anxious and hurt with, with some feelings of euphoria sprank, sprinkled in there. But for me, the feelings of euphoria outweighed everything. You give me 10 seconds of it, ooh, ah, and I will ignore hours of anguish. That is exactly how delusional I was. And I didn't realize that I was out of like, Sydney, you were hurting, you were in pain most of that. Most of the time, most of the time this dude has been in your life, you have been in some, tor- you, you've been in some type of pain. You li- literally, I'm, I promise y'all I'm not trying to paint him to be some kind of nigga. I'm trying to tell you exactly what happened exactly how it was i'm not adding i'm subtracting no it was definitely times i oh it was oh so amazing and gushy and loving and ah, i can't even begin explaining you how wonderful that shit felt but if i look at it that was five percent of i give you ten that was ten percent of the time in which this person has been in my life. The rest, I have been anxious, hurting, crying. Y'all, I had got so used to waking up with anxiety that after he was out of my life, I still woke up with anxiety. That's how habitual waking up anxious had been. I was like, how long was I in this fucking state of anxiety and didn't even quite, I just couldn't even see it y'all. But I was scared and, 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 and nursing some pain most of the fucking time. But I didn't care. I got that neurological rush, that euphoric rush. When I thought I had a soul tie, I didn't really want to break the soul tie. Why well, I want to do that? I want to break my soul tie. I needed that. Like that was still, mm, it's very, it sound like I'm describing crack, huh? Yep. Yep. Anyway, but I spoke my mind, but I didn't, but I did want to understand. I didn't, I talked, but I also taught him that he keep hurting me and I'll forgive him. Even the most painful betrayals. So from red to green, you know, so, the red flags I didn't convert it into a green flag. Oh God, this <sighs> he got a murderous baby mama. But I transformed it into he's re- he really loves me. He's risking his life to be with me. If he's with a murderous baby mama, I don't care what he feels like. A sane person would say, Oh, bitch, fuck you bye. And that's what he would have done to me. If I'd have said I got a murderous baby dad, he would have left my ass in the dust. But not me not the emotionally neglected person that I am not the one who's never had anything that feels like love not the one so desperate to be loved not 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 me okay you know him coming inside me against my will I transform that he wants a family with me he wants me in his life so let's talk about that I told him over and over again that I didn't want no kids and then all that shit. Then when he came inside of me, like without like telling me and shit like that. And then I found out after I got up and it was a cum shot in my pussy, like, you know, he would do saying things like that. That should have read as a complete violation. And not to mention, I told him if he ever come at me, he would be paying for the plan, plan B pills. I popped a bunch of them motherfuckers. He only paid for one. So that part. And so it was like, Wow, the, the 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 part of me that needs healing liked it. I like when well, when I do like coming my pussy, I like all that. But I did clearly tell him that I don't want you to come my pussy, and he just wouldn't care. He would just not give a fuck. He would violate that trust. I said, okay, you can fuck me raw, but don't come my pussy. He just didn't care. I can take some responsibility in that because I did like it, but at the same time, my nigga, why are you doing that? But I transformed it into something cute. Okay, so he doesn't keep his word, but he's doing all he can and risking his life to see me. It's like, all of that's a red flag, Sid. But see, I didn't made it. Okay, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Like the things that I was doing. And and it's 
it just goes so perfectly with this. Emac, you are the shit. So I lost uh, interest. In, okay, so then the next part is deterioration. Uh, you lose interest in him with the illusion fades and not what you wanted, not what you thought, you know, I was, be so I did end up getting to this point where I was like, okay, this is, this nigga just not gonna change. Like it's been three years. I mean, she was 2021, it's 2024. You have not sh shifted. Well, actually I didn't really fuck with it that much. 2024, 2023, you haven't changed. You still hurtful. So, cause then we get to a point where he's broken up with the girl there's nothing stopping you from talking to me every day and you still don't. There's nothing stopping you from being considerate to my feelings and you still ain't. It's nothing stopping. It's like, this hasn't changed a thing. He made it seem like the reason why he was inconsiderate and not calling me and, and, and like not really, and, and like leaving my messages on red, like not really giving me attention because of some fat bitch. Fat bitch is long gone. You live by yourself now. We can talk freely and you still cannot make, you still cannot last one week without talking to me every day. And then he said, then that his mama died, all these tragedies. His life seemed to be one big tragedy. But, but, but even when like things are good, you are still not, I got to Cape Town, still wasn't seeing this nigga. Now he was going through a hard time. I think he was grieving his mother and I'm, I'm not trying to act like that. That's not it. But it's just like, what am I supposed to do with this? It's been years of me being emotionally neglected and you not being considerate. And I just had to keep being understanding, keep being forgiven, keep understanding your plight, keep doing it. And eventually that shit happened. So I can say around 2023 that that strong feeling, the, 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 I, the limit was fading, the limit was fading a bit. It was, it was still there, but it was nowhere near as crazy as it was. Um, and, and also at the beginning of Columbia, when we talked again, like whenever we started talking again, um, my feelings just weren't as strong, you know? So, um, which is good for me, but the emotional impact he has is still very much present, which y'all have been tracking this, this during this series. So unhealthy stuff. The problem with limerence is it feels so good on a neurochemical level. It can easily get into addiction and love sickness and can be detrimental to the psyche and overall well-being, as we have seen here. Uh, it's painful because it is tied to self-worth and self-esteem and it's not limited uh it's not in you know rooted in reality um so you know it says you know if you want to heal yourself discover the reasons why you have the attachment to them which i've done here and understand what they represent for you we've talked about that you know one-sided you know it was one-sided that's a big key um while um what's he saying no. Anyway, um, it was, like I said, emotions. I think he loved me. I absolutely feel like he loved me, cared for me, felt the same spiritual bond, all that. But as far as showing up, physically doing shit, it was one-sided. But I was okay with scraps because I never had anything more than that. So to, in order to deal with the pain of the scraps, I imagined the rest of it and I let the feeling we had overshadow what was actually happening. Um, limerence might be able to shift into love, but you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's all we wrote down here. So y'all, the moral of the story is this. The moral story is this. I'm glad I didn't cry. Like I thought I cried a little bit this morning, but I didn't cry this time. The moral of the story is I can definitely see that I have done all of these things and I'm dedicated to healing. I want to be able to heal this and, and really heal my tendency and really be aware of my own tendencies so that when the man in my dreams come along, I can see him clearly. I can be able to identify him instead of thinking, coming up with shit and making up shit. I want to really dig into limerence and how, what that was like with my dad. And, um, my dad, uh, um, 
my dad. Um, that's what that's what I'm going to focus on with the next video. It's my dad. And I was talking to Roberta about this, and she said, "Um, limerence is not all bad because I think I needed that. In a way, I it sounds crazy, but in a way, I needed this even at the time with my ex and." even with my dad, like I needed, I needed something, you know, it, it's, it's a trauma response. It's something that you do when you are just not, you just feeling emotionally neglected. So you have to do these things. And I just honestly feel like, um, it had its place in this time, but it, I, I do, I no longer need this anymore because I'm no longer afraid to see myself and people as they actually are. Because I'm no longer going to tie that to something being wrong with me or bad about me. So that's the work. Anyway, I love y'all so very much. I hope this is beneficial to anyone who's watching. And I love y'all so much.